Good evening, everyone. We are going to go ahead and call to order the Thursday, June 13th meeting of the Capitola City Council. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Clark? Here. Councilmember Morgan? Here. Councilmember Peterson? Here. Vice Mayor Brooks? Here. And Mayor Brown? Here. Uh, please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do we have any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? Staff has no changes to the agenda this evening. All right. Thank you. With that, we're going to move on uh, to presentations. And we will start uh, with a mayor's proclamation honoring Elder Abuse Month. So um, we want to share, Cap the city of Capitola is home to over 3,100 residents aged 60 or older who enrich and strengthen our community by serving as leaders, mentors, volunteers, and vital members of our community. The city of Capitola is home to over 3,100 residents who serve uh, over the age of 60 who serve as leaders, mentors, volunteers, and vital members of our community. I, that was so important, I just felt like I should say it twice. Elder abuse is one of our most unrecognized and, un and underreported issues faced by older adults, with estimates of one out of every 10 Americans over 60 having experienced elder abuse, and as few as one out of 24 elder abuse cases actually being reported. As our aging population lives longer in our local community and nationwide, we are presented with an opportunity to think about our collective needs and future in regard to providing the best care and protection to older adults who are vulnerable to elder abuse. Recognizing that it is up to all of us to ensure that proper social structures exist so people can retain community and societal connection with the goal of reducing the likelihood of abuse and ensuring that older adults live free from abuse, neglect, and exploitation. Do we have anyone here this evening to speak? Hi, please. Thank you for being here this evening. Welcome. My name is Whitney Barnes, and on behalf of the Adult Protective Services team of Santa Cruz County Human Services Department, I'd like to thank the City of Capitola for this proclamation, proclaiming June as Elder Abuse Awareness Month. Our team investigates abuse, neglect, exploitation, and concerns of self-neglect among older and dependent adults throughout our county. We strive every day to reduce the risk of abuse and neglect while increasing and enhancing safety among older adults and dependent adults in all of Santa Cruz County. The issue of elder abuse is significant in both scope and scale. According to the National Council on Aging, roughly 10% of Americans over the age of 60 have experienced some form of elder abuse, abuse by other. Various studies also estimate that the issues of self-neglect affect somewhere between 10 and 21% of older adults in America. What this means is that of 10 older adults in your life, one or two of them may be suffering from either abuse, neglect, exploitation, or the inability to meet their own daily needs. And then to put this scale further into perspective, locally, the population of adults in Santa Cruz County age 60 or over will be 30% of our county's total population by 2030. It's important to keep in mind, and at Adult Protective Services, we are acutely aware that only one in every 24 instances of abuse against older adults gets reported. That highlights the importance of events like this, of uh, the City of Capitola proclaiming June as Elder Abuse Awareness Month. By raising awareness on this issue, we will increase attention, ease fears of seeking help and support, and hopefully create a community where we can all come together and work toward the elimination of older adult abuse. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Right. We are going to move on now to a proclamation honoring the 150th anniversary of Cap Camp Capitola's founding. On the 18th day of June in 1874, Samuel Alonzo Hall officially opened the resort called Camp Capitola. 
The community known as Soquel Landing since construction of the wharf in 1857 became commonly known as Camp Capitola. The city will celebrate the 150th anniversary of the opening of Camp Capitola on June 18th. To commemorate the history of Camp Capitola, the Capitola Historical Museum's 2024 annual exhibition and other educational programs will be presented through the end of 2024. The community is proud of Camp Capitola's history and the city is dedicated to being a welcome and inclusive community, a special place in the heart of Santa Cruz County. The city's goals for the future are reflections of the values and lessons of the past and also represent the heart of the intentions set out by the earliest founders and contributors to Capitola. This is uh, really exciting to celebrate this 150th anniversary of Camp Capitola. Deborah, do you have uh, comments? Do you want to share with us um, about this exciting anniversary? Yeah, just briefly. Um, I'm Deborah Osterberg. I'm the museum curator for the Capitola Historical Museum. And I wanted to mention that the title of our uh, exhibition uh, is Little City Under Canvas, uh, the 150th anniversary of Camp Capitola. And that'll be in our museum throughout the year. So please come by and see us. Uh, we're a admission-free museum, open every Friday, Saturday, Sunday from noon to four. Uh, I did also want to let you know I've got some posters of our uh, exhibit poster copies of it, I'll put in the back table. I also brought some copies of our latest uh, museum newsletter that I'll keep back there if you want to pick one up. And I also wanted to state a couple more things. We do have an opening on our museum uh, board of trustees, so I have a little application or um, uh, announcement about it here that I'll also leave. But I want to introduce some of our board members who are here today. So you guys stand up when I mention your name. <laughs> uh, Enrique Dolmo. Yeah. And uh, Emmy Mitchell Lind, who is our newly elected president of our board. And in the back, oops, go this way, uh, Roger Wyatt. And uh, then our outgoing president, Dave Payton. <laughs> so, anyway, I just wanted to state that. And uh, again, I'll have these available on the back table for folks interested. Thank you. To share briefly, I was here um, for the opening of the latest exhibit, and we had some visitors from South Carolina, uh, and it was a, a gentleman and his wife, and his wife's name was Capitola, and they had their two daughters here, and one of their daughters' name was Capitola, and I believe his wife's mother and grandmother were also named Capitola, so they had four generations of people, women named Capitola in their family, and they came, and they happened to be here on the day that the exhibit was opening, and the, they got to be introduced and they took some pictures out in front of the seal and they emailed me later and said that they just had a great time and it was a highlight of their trip to visit the city uh, that, you know, their their family members share the name of. So, Oh, good. <laughs> yes, for those who didn't hear, they, they did a lot of shopping in the village for everything that was branded with Capitola. All right, uh, we will move on now to our report on closed session. Good evening. A closed session was had on the items on the agenda and no reportable action was taken. All right. Do we have any additional materials for tonight's meeting? Staff distributed additional materials for items 8F, 8H, and 9A for tonight's agenda. All materials have been uploaded to the agenda packet online are available in hard copy in the back of the room. In addition, the presentations for items 9A, 9B, and 9C were provided to the council and made available to the public before tonight's meeting. Great. Thank you. We'll move on now to item six, oral communications by members of the public. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the council on any items not on tonight's agenda or anything on our consent agenda. Um, you will have three minutes to speak. Please state your name if you'd like it included in the record. Welcome. Yeah, hello, my name is James Ewing Whitman. You know, I had to step out of the building briefly just to look up and see if the flag outside was a corporate pirate flag like that flag, and it's not. People might want to understand the difference between the real U.S. flag and this corporate maritime pirate flag. But it's nice to be here. Now the flag underneath it is pretty disgusting. Um, I'll leave it at that. 
So what's within your guys' control? Everybody can change, open their eyes and learn and even help each other more than they already probably are. I have a friend in Florida that reminded me, um, Dr. Francis Boyle, the Harvard-educated law professor, did something almost completely different than those Jesuit-controlled Ivy League schools. He drafted the Biologics, Weapons, and Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989 and has presented affidavits that the COVID mRNA injection are biological weapons and weapons of mass destruction. So I don't know what you guys can do about it, but we're all in this together because the effects of those technologies are affecting people that weren't vaccinated. What else? I had fun at the city council meeting. What caused me five years ago to show up and talk there was why are we allowing military frequency weapons in civilian locations? And at that time, there were about 40 other individuals that were speaking on the subject or and other subjects. But Tuesday, I was the only one that was publicly speaking about anything in that room. I wrote this. I didn't get a chance to say it. I mean, you guys all have to have a sense of humor. What seems government's favorite pastime? Pretending that it and its agencies are an authority on anything. I thought that was funny. I made that up. So um, as far as the stuff going on with our water table and the different legislations that uh, the EPA is working on, you know, the infrastructure going through the county to pump up to 5 million gallons of treated sewage into our water table, that affects this water table as well. And there are some areas where the EPA is off by a factor of 10,000. And they're going to be charging the citizens to remove the um, forever chemicals that have been in everything since March of 2022 and that train derailment happened. So it's just interesting to see what's going to go on. I'm glad that there's another discussion later on a subject I'm highly interested in that could probably bring in a lot of revenue into this city. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hi, my name is Goran Klopic. I play almost every day basketball at Jade Street Park in my spare time. I want to um, draw attention to something that is happening sometimes at Jade Street Park, and that, uh, that is illegal distribution of drugs uh, by drug dealers sometimes that I have to watch. <laughs> There is another issue that I want to bring up, and this is the death of uh, Damon Gutzwiller, who lost his life on duty. I know him. I played pickleball with him in Aptos, uh, and uh, I think it's a really, uh, really disgusting, dis disgusting what happened to him. Uh, somebody else told me here in Capitola that there are not enough parking spaces for businesses and their customers to dine in into the restaurants. That's also something to consider about. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you all. Take care. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hi, thank you. So regarding vaccines, I want to quote from this edition of Wise Traditions in Food Farming and the Healing Arts and what you just heard from James about biological weapons in the vaccines is in this article. It's called Vaccination Update. Disclosed Ingredients May Be the Tip of the Iceberg by Kendall Nelson. And you can find the article at westonaprice.org, very well researched. In part, it is our duty to advocate for the legal right to exercise flexible medical, religious, and conscientious belief, belief exemptions to vaccination and keep informed consent to medical risk-taking at the center of medical ethics. We must always bear in mind that unlike the situation with prescription drugs, manufacturers and healthcare professionals administering vaccines are not liable when a person is injured after receiving a childhood vaccine, 
licensed by the FDA and recommended by the CDC as safe and effective, in quotes. When we promise to keep our children safe, we need to understand that when we give them routine vaccinations, we are exposing them to some of the most toxic substances on the planet. Studies have clearly shown that the mercury and aluminum compounds in traditional vaccines are linked to the disastrous rise in autism, which now affects an estimated one in 36 children and one in 22 day boys. And we have barely begun to grasp the calamitous impact of the disclosed and undisclosed ingredients present in the growing crop of mRNA vaccine injections. If the idea of introducing aluminum detergent or shark liver extract via vaccines made from cell lines derived from aborted fetuses into your child's body is incongruent with your belief in human beings in her perfection, you are not alone. The World Economic Forum, World Health Organization, the media, and other entities may try to continue spreading fear through concepts like disease X, the speculative new pandemic. Anyway, check out this article. I have copies for anyone who wants it, if you'd like to read it. Thank you. In paper copy. Thank you. Any further public comments? Hi, welcome. Can I add this to the... Um, good evening, uh, Mayor Brown, Capitola City Council and staff. My name is Christine McBroom and my family and I are Capitola residents. We actively participate in community activities, especially those serving children, as we have two boys, ages seven and eight. We believe in investing our community and having served as Capitola City Treasurer and our family volunteers um, in many capacities. We also have a local business and a commercial property further contributing to the city's tax base. This year, our boys wanted to join Capitola Junior Guards. After consulting with other parents and city staff, we believe our chances for enrollment were good. On sign-up day, my husband and I split duties and visited two different workstations to register each of our boys at the exact same time signups were allowed for non-returning new participants. Despite our efforts, our boys ended up on a waiting list and there's been no progress for months. We learned returning children, regardless of residency, have priority over resident participants who are new to the program. This policy blocks taxpaying residents' children from participating, favoring non-residents instead. While I support inclusivity for non-residents, it should not come at the expense of children who live here. These formative years are crucial for social networking with their local peers and safety skills, the very essence of the program. After contacting the City of Capitola's Recreation Division Manager to understand the policy and provide feedback, I suggested shifting priorities to give local children who are new to the program a chance. The proposed or, uh, order of priority would would be returning residents, first-time residents, returning non-residents, and first-time non-residents. I was informed that the new technology platform and limited staffing prevented this change. Consequently, I proposed allocating budget funds for an additional staff member during registration, but the issue remains unresolved. Another suggestion was limit double session signups for returning children under eight to allow for new participants to get a chance. This too was not considered as a feasible option. It's unfathomable that we cannot find a way for Capitola programs to serve Capitola residents, especially when those residents are children. As the city, as the council considers a continuation and expansion of the sales tax measure, I urge you to allocate funds to better serve our residents. It's difficult to explain to my children why they can volunteer, volunteer to protect and clean up our beaches but can't participate in principal programs conducted on the same very beach. Thank you for your attention and consideration. Thank you. Any further public comment this evening? Seeing none, 
Uh, we will close public comment and bring it now to staff and city council comments. Uh, we'll start with staff. Any comments from staff this evening? We do have a number of comments this evening. The first is I'll remind council that several years ago, this council supported the establishment of the Cabrillo Public Service Fellowship Program <clears throat> through a donation into an endowment that supports Cabrillo students who are interested in public service careers between their first and second year at Cabrillo. As part of that fellowship program, all the jurisdictions in the county have agreed to host Cabrillo interns, or fellows, for one summer. And this year, Capitola was lucky enough to get our first Cabrillo intern. So, Matteo Donato, uh, Donato, I just want to welcome him to the city. He's helping us out this summer. He's kind of working in a variety of departments, but I just want to thank the council for your support for this great program and introduce you to Matteo. Welcome. Would you like to say, say a few words? You didn't know he was going to get put on the spot. You don't ask, have to. You are welcome to. Ask him a trick question. <laughs> Offered, not required. Hello. Um, I'm Mateo um, from Cabrillo. I'm a local. So, yeah. Um, I'm about to go down to Long Beach this weekend to uh, Lisa Place when I uh, attend Long Beach State. So, Great. pretty cool. All right. Welcome. We're excited to have you here. All right. Hi. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, I want to make sure that everybody knows that tomorrow, well, first of all, summer is officially kicked off. We've got a lot of things that have happened in the past this week. Um, but to close out the week, we have our first uh, food truck Friday at Monterey Park. Um, the Capitola Junior Guard Parents Club is going to be hosting the beer garden. And um, TNT and the Explosion will be the entertainment, which is a family band in the area. So I encourage everybody to please come on out, enjoy um, what is supposed to be a lovely day tomorrow, and our first, uh, well, a way to wrap up what is a very busy first week of the summer. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I just wanted to give you an update that the next, the eighth version of our housing element is now posted on our website and open for public review. Um, it'll be on the website indefinitely, but in the next seven days, public is welcome to send comment and then we'll be submitting to HCD next Friday. So we're moving forward and hopefully um, by the 28th, we expect to get comments back. Um, from the HCD on whether or not we have a conditional letter. So that's my update. Thank you. Fingers crossed. Thank you so much. Any further staff comments? No. OK, we'll bring it to council. Uh, council comments, we'll start at this end. I have a couple. Thank you. Uh, the first thing I would like to do is see us put Save the Wave Coalition on our next agenda for city council. Uh, I was excited to hear that they want to include us with the World Surfing Reserve, which is done in most of Santa Cruz. And it ends right at Capitola, so they would like to add Capitola all the way down to Brighton Beach. It's pretty exciting to be uh, included in that. So they're going to come and give a, a presentation. We can get that on the, on the agenda. Great. Great. Uh, secondly, I want to shout out to the police department, the POA, and the Capitola Foundation on a great um, car show this last weekend. Although it was only one day, it was uh, a fun-filled time for everybody, everybody that showed up. So thank you. Yeah, I wanted to shout out to the POA as well. It was a great event. I personally kind of think the one day worked really well, but if you guys have other feedback, I'd love to hear it too. Um, and I just want to maybe address the last speaker at open session about um, maybe streamlining our way of getting into junior guards or just the resident access to our things for our children here. Thank you. Um, I just want to let everyone know that I just returned um, from the Netherlands on a trip hosted by Ecology Action and we'll be returning with a report out hopefully at the end of July um, with other engineers and our staff, one of our staff who also attended. Um, I also want to um, recognize Dexter Ray um, who helped champion raising of the flag, the pride flag. Um, he unfortunately took his life, and I just wanted to take a moment to recognize him and his commitment to the LGBTQ community. 
Um, and then also, I was interested in learning more about the ordinance. I think Santa Cruz City is doing one um, for golf carts and allowing golf carts to um, drive around the community. Thank you. There's some pretty cool ones here in the city. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, I want to take a moment um, to share a couple things. So first, uh, I want to share, I missed our last meeting. Uh, I was in D.C., I was invited by the National League of Cities to be part of a local solutions to homelessness working group. Learned a lot about what's working, what's not working in other cities uh, across the country and uh, a lot of things that uh, hopefully we can, can take and put into practice here in the city um, to address our housing issues and um, to better serve those who are unhoused. Uh, other than that, I, I wanna take a moment uh, this evening to uh, honor Jerry Clark, former council member. Uh, Jerry passed away last uh, earlier this month at the Veterans Hospital in Palo Alto at the age of 84. Jerry moved to Capitola in 1970, making Depot Hill his permanent residence with his wife, where he started the Depot Hill Agency. He went on to become a city council member and served for 16 years, including two terms as mayor. And he was active in his community in many ways, including heading the Begonia Festival, participating in open studios, and being responsible for a naval port visit during his mayor mayoral term in the 1980s. In retirement, Jerry rekindled his love for the arts. His awe-inspiring bird sculptures continue to draw locals and tourists. And even more noteworthy are his ceramic sea stars, ubiquitous in Capitola and adorning homes throughout the world. I, I doubt you can walk through the city without finding one. In recent years, he handed down the craftsmanship and artistry of the sea stars to his grandson, who will continue his legacy. So uh, tonight, Jerry is celebrated and remembered for the mark that he left on Capitola. All of us here at the city express our heartfelt gratitude and appreciation for his enduring contributions to our city. Tonight's meeting will be held in his honor and adjourned in his honor at the end of, of the evening. Do we have any further comments? Okay. Seeing none, we will move on now to item eight, which is our consent items. Uh, all items will be enacted by one motion on the form listed below, and there's no separate discussion on these items unless a council member would like to pull an item for separate discussion. Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion. Anyone can do it. I'll move. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. That brings us to our general government this evening. We'll start with 9A, short-term wharf, wharf use agreement and temporary structure plan. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'm just gonna start off. Um, okay, so I'm very excited about this item, our short-term wharf use agreement and the structure plan. Thank you. Um, so we're starting things a little different. We're gonna start with our recommendation and kind of guide you towards that. So you'll notice that through the evening. <laughs> um, so the idea here is we're looking for authorization for the city manager to sign the lease and to also approve the outline temporary structure plan that our director of public works will go over. So a little bit of details. Uh, the use agreement, as you're aware, of course, the wharf has been inaccessible, the former buildings were um, demolished, and the community showed a lot of interest in having similar uh, services such as what Boat and Bait used to do on the wharf um, as soon as possible. So to that end, the city did negotiate with Boat and Bait and came to um, a, a place where I think everyone will be happy, that's my hope, and the terms are 16-month terms, so this would get um, them operating as soon as possible and would go through the end of December 2025. Uh, we settled on a 2,500-square-foot lease area on the wharf uh, in a specific area that um, our director will go over. There is an annual rent of $25,000. That is for the year 2025 only, so no rent at all for the remainder of the 2024. The lease allows the operation of the bait and tackle shop as in the past and requires boat and bait to operate the boat hoist, 
uh, provide boat rentals and repairs, operate a water taxi beginning in 2025, and also install and operate um, at least eight, but no more than 60 moorings, again, starting in 2025. So that's the lease. And thankfully, we have someone much more knowledgeable about structures and other things. We're going to bring up Director Kahn to go over the plan. Just to, sorry to interrupt, but I noticed the last slide and this slide says there's a 25,000 square feet license area. 25. Clarify. 100. 2,500. Okay, thank you. Yep, so sorry. And, rent. and the rent. Annual. Is oh, annual. Yeah. annual, yeah, that's in one year. Okay. Only one mistake, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Hi. Hi. Good evening, Mayor and Council, <laughs> making sure no one else had any other additions to the uh, lease information. So the facilities plan. So this is out at the head of the wharf. It's near where the old building was, but not exactly in its footprint. It's 2,500 square feet for the entire area. So that's all of the structures and including their boat storage. So here we have two 20 by 10 foot temporary structures uh, for them to use in retail in their operations. Two storage sheds, one which is already existing, owned by Bay and Bay, and another one to be manufactured or purchased in the same uh, size and uh, visual. And then a permanent fuel shed that is required for them to store gasoline for the boats, which is the city would procure and install, but then the permits which they would need from the fire district and county health would be part of the lease stipulation for uh, Boat and Bay. Next slide, please. Um, this is a little, oh, sorry, this is a little closer up of a view. Um, as you may recall, for some of the items for the wharf, we didn't end up putting some of the decorative fish um, at the end of the wharf just to see where we would end up with our um, permanent structures. So uh, that little squiggly line there is a future, a future project. Um, but the rest of this is where we propose the uh, structures go. So the fuel storage would be up by the hoist. That is a permanent structure. It also requires electricity. And then the other um, structures as labeled on the image here and was also included in your agenda packet. Next slide. Uh, you may recall one of the um, change orders we did for Cushman contracting the contractors out on the wharf during the resiliency project was to include utility hookups um, for any kind of temporary or permanent purpose. So the utility hookup for this is already existing. So the temporary structures are very much temporary buildings. They are steel. They are more familiar as a garage structure. Um, again, they are 10 by 20 feet. They're steel. They are wind rated and coated for marine environment. Um, they will require an electrical retrofit after they are placed for uh, lighting, uh, refrigerators, things like that, that the boat and bait uses in their operation. Um, also required to put in ADA compliant flooring because they come without a flooring. Um, this design uh, was presented to the Planning Commission um, at their unagendized as an update at their last meeting. Uh, they formed an ad hoc committee to comment on the visuals of the structure, so that is why they are different from the original agenda packet, and then this update was included as additional materials. So they had comments on the color, the siding, the roof, and additional windows. So here is the structure as proposed. Uh, this is an example of a similar constructed structure. So as you can see, there's no bottom. It's very much unfinished on the inside. It is very shed looking. Next slide, please. This is just an example of the color. I knew this was going to come up a little bit different on this slide because every computer screen is different. It is more of a slate blue, if that means something to you. Not so much of a bright blue. <laughs> Uh, the fuel storage shed, um, as required by uh, County Health, is fire rated. Um, has electricity to it, has alarms on it, and then the storage shed is very similar to what is current. That is a picture of what's currently out there. Will be painted to reflect the color of the temporary structures. Uh, this has been priced out and unfortunately ended up a little funky on the slide. Um, but the temporary buildings also have a purpose for reuse for general public works operations. If for some reason we they're not temporary buildings. So at some point they would need to come off the wharf and have a second life either at our yard or some other kind of storage facility at one of our facilities. Um, the hazardous material shed will remain on the wharf and is meant to remain on the wharf. Next slide, please. Thank you so much. So we have an updated fiscal impact and I apologize, I misspoke earlier. The rent uh, for this under this lease would be $24,000 in the year 
2025 monthly at 2000. So thank you for pointing that out. And we would be, we as the city would be investing about 32,000 to purchase the temporary structures for their use under this agreement. And that brings us to the recommended action and a reminder of the layout here that you would be approving. So we're asking that you would authorize the city manager to sign the short-term use agreement between the city and JFS Incorporated, Boat and Bait, for the temporary structures located on Capitol Wharf for use of them and to approve the outlined structure plan. And if you have questions, both Jessica and myself are available. Thank you. Questions from council? Councilmember Clark, Councilmember Morgan, no? My only question was is where, I didn't see where the, uh, the, the fish station is going to be. The fish cleaning station was not on that imagery. It would be near the, uh, where the former fish station was. Um, that is currently requesting a building permit, so I don't have the exact location of that. Um, but it would not interfere with the operations of this, but would still be out on the head of the wharf. Great, thank you. All right, with no further questions from council, we will bring this to public comment. Any public comment on this item? Hi, right, welcome back. You know, thank you, it's nice to be here. My name is still James Ewing Whitman. I gotta say, it was quite impressive to somehow find the time to watch them sleeve those piers. That's most of the building I've done the last 15 years is utterly ridiculous as far as implementing complicated designs not only was that simple and efficient but quite strong now it is quite remarkable i believe that pier is 19 feet above sea level you know the main pier of santa cruz is 23 so it's it's nice that it seems like um i haven't walked on it but it's probably fairly sturdy and much stronger than before which i've mentioned is going to be important i have way too much time that's enough it's just good to see that the existing business that's been there for uh, almost 30 years is going to be back in business soon. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to council for discussion and a vote. Uh, any comments or discussion on this end? No? Comments or discussion on this end? No? I'll just share uh, briefly. This is very exciting. It was a, a long uh, process from when we realized that the original buildings had to come down for safety reasons to community outreach to negotiations and and working with um, the owners of of boat and bait and I'm really excited to see that we've come to this point where we're moving forward and they have an opportunity to reopen that's all I have to share yeah I just wanted to briefly um Thanks, staff, for all the hard work that everybody has put into this. And I really think that the community is going to benefit and be really excited when the project is finished and we can all see it in its glory. So thanks so much, everybody. I'll add to uh, thanks to staff for working with uh, the people who live in the area. They were um, kind of perplexed on the, the, the way the program was going or the process was going, but it was nice to see it get cleaned up and uh, and listen to them and, and do what we could do for them. So thank you. All right. Uh, if there's no further comments, we'll entertain a motion. Um, I'll go ahead and authorize the city manager to sign a short-term use agreement um, with the assurances that the square footage and the rent are updated um, for the temporary structures located on the Capitola Wharf and um, item one and two, just as recommended. And I will second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. We'll move on to item 9B, Capitola Village and Wharf Business Improvement Area Assessments for Fiscal Year 2024 and 2025. Turn it over to Jim. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, as you just mentioned, this next item before you is the Capitola Village Wharf and Business Improvement area assessments for the next fiscal year. Um, by way of background, the BIA is a um, business-based self-imposed assessment district that was um, created in June of 2005 with the adoption of Ordinance 889. Um, those assessments are 
made by the business owners and then used to market and promote the business um, in the area. Assessments for this next fiscal year are proposed to be set at 75% of maximum for all the businesses with the exception of hotels and lodging, which is at 50%. Um, this is consistent with prior years. Um, with the only real difference is that they can do the um, make in lieu payments, but since the pandemic, we haven't done the in lieu payments. So this is really what we've done in all prior years. So as far as process, um, on May 23rd, we set a hearing for this evening. We notified the um, we put notice of the public hearing out in the Sentinel and mailed it to all the affected business owners um, as required by state law. BIA does submit an annual uh, plan and budget for council approval, which was in the agenda packet. And just as a reminder, there's no fiscal impact to the city. All the services that are provided by city staff, public works and finance are reimbursed by the BIA. And one other piece of the annual assessment is um, since Measure Day was approved in 2018, the BIA receives um, restricted terms of occupancy tax directed by city council, um, requiring 25% of the re restricted POT be allocated to village improvements, and that it's presented separately within the budget, which it is in the agenda packet. And so for this upcoming 24-25, we're estimating that there'll be about $37,000 of restricted TOT and the BIA, BIA is proposing to use 14 for village enhancements and 7,500 for holiday events, which is about 58% of that total, so well above the 25%. Um, this is just listing the assessment amounts. I don't think they're the same as asking for the assessment. Okay. And so the recommended action this evening is to conduct the public hearing and adopt the proposed resolution levying the fiscal year 2425 capital village and wards business improvement area assessments and a commitment to execute BIA annual plan and budget. All right, I'm happy to answer any questions and we have um, a couple of representatives from the BIA to talk about it. Great, thank you. Questions? Questions? No? Okay. Oh, we have a question. Yeah, Sorry, small question. Um, I was just looking at the budget. And there's a line item in expenditures called renewal. What is that? Uh, good evening. Those are the expenses to put this little dog and pony show on. The, the mailing is very expensive, the advertising, the Sentinel. It's so, yeah, and stamps, you know, everything, envelopes. Thank you. Not my time, however. <laughs> All right, uh, with no further questions, we'll go to public comment. Welcome. Hi, I'm Karin Hanna. I am in Guajardo. And we're here to answer your questions. Any questions? Sure. Um, the holidays are just around the corner. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about what holiday events we can look forward to this this season um, with the expenditures of $7,500. The normal ones that we're usually going to do, like we would participate with uh, the Chamber of Commerce for the Surfing Santa. Mm -hmm. so we walk in December as well. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the decorations we'll do, the window decorating contest and the wreaths that will go in three different parts of uh, the village for photo opportunities for guests when they visit. Right. I was wondering... I know you guys probably get asked this all the time, but a lot of people have asked about a tree, and, you know, we used to do the tree. Is that still possibly an option, or...? I think we have to check on that. The last couple times with the Patchen Farm that we utilized before, due to yeah. the fires in 2020, yeah. a lot of their big trees were gone, so okay. we haven't gotten to the heights that we used to use. We used to use, like, a 15-foot right. tree. Okay. We haven't been able to get those the last couple years. Um, the if it's... Of them and the deck yeah. decorations of them take a lot of volunteer effort. Okay. So we had gone to the wreaths the previous years, um, and those have been a little bit more low maintenance and easier to manage, especially on the public works department. So just right. having to bring them, bring those in and help us with that, the wreaths we can do ourselves. Okay. Well, just putting it out there that I know. The other problem is that since the drought, the trees weren't living long enough. So by the by the end, by the time the crew's back full time after the first to take the trees down, they're dead. 
And then people are like, well, why do we have dead trees? You know, so, uh, and you can't do, an, we don't have any place to store an artificial tree that big, but the wreaths are reusable year after year after year, so they're, uh, they're more affordable. Okay, thank you. Questions? No? Any further questions? No? All right. Just as an aside, I was the vice mayor to Jerry Clark's, one of Jerry Clark's terms as mayor, so. He's a great guy and very talented. Absolutely. Definitely left his mark on town with those sea stars. Yes, he did. Thank you. Any further public comment on this item? All right, we'll bring it back to council. Uh, I will share, um, I uh, joined the, the BIA meetings on a, a monthly basis. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into the beautification of the village and the promotion, and um, I encourage those who are interested to visit CapitolaVillage.com and learn more about our shops and our restaurants, our lodging, the entertainment and events that we have coming on uh, in the village. Uh, a, a lot of effort uh, from our business owners uh, is, is much appreciated, does not go unnoticed. Uh, any further comments? I would just like to thank them for what they do. They do a great job and, and it really shows. So thank you very much. All right. Uh, with that, then we will entertain a motion. I will move to. Oh, adopt. Thank you. Adopt the resolution. <laughs> uh, loving the fiscal year 24, 25 capital village and wharf business improvement area assessments and accepting that annual plan and budget. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> I'll second it. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. We will move on to item 9C, our fiscal year 23-24 city fee schedule. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Again. <clears throat> So this last item before you this evening is an amendment to our current fee schedule. Slide. Um, our current fee schedule was adopted last June and amended in October of 2023. Uh, May of this year, the council, our last meeting, council adopted resolution 4374 for this um, administrative policy for the city park reservation permit use policy. Within that um, policy, there were some uh, fees proposed and uh, council worked through and approved those, uh, council of Eastern Town approved those fees. And so now we need to amend the fee schedule to incorporate those into the existing fee schedule. Um, so the proposed fee amendments are to add the park space reservation fee at $10 per hour, barbecue permit fee at $10, bounce house power equipment permit fee at 60, and temporary structure permit fee at $60. And I think that's all that was in the last meeting. Um, recommended action is to adopt the proposed resolution amending the fee schedule for fiscal year 23-24. All right, any questions from council? Questions? No? All right, we'll take it to public comment. Is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to council for a discussion and or a vote. I'll move to <laughs> adopt the resolution amending the fee schedule for fiscal year 23-24. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. With that, we are at the end of our meeting. We will adjourn tonight in honor of the late Jerry Clark. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night.